Hello. So if you've been living in the UK for the past few months, we've been going through a bit of a heat wave and we've seen a lot more sun than we usually would, at least in Wales. Because of this, I've been experimenting with solar panels. These particular ones output five volts, but you can chain two in series uh, to get 10 volts. Uh, and I've been doing that, but then limiting it with a Zener diode uh, to knock it back down to 9.1. That's safe for most pedals, and you can even power them at 5 volts, but uh, you'll obviously get more gated and starved results, which can be quite interesting. When using it to power pedals, uh, you can kind of use it like a bit of an expression controller. So as your hand covers the panel, the sound dies out, so you can get some interesting effects uh, by letting the fuzz sort of fade in and out of life. I've been thinking about a way to utilise these for a more interesting project, and I got thinking about the Cannibal Pride. Cannibal Pride was a DIY noise circuit that was released in conjunction uh, with my band's record that came out uh, last year. Said band has broken up now, unfortunately, so the record is no longer available. But the circuit is available at Dirtbox Layouts. Thinking about that circuit and utilizing solar panels, I came up with this guy. This is Sun Swallower. So again, it's a sort of chaotic noise generator, uh, but it's powered by the sun. It also has a DC jack, so if, like me, you live in Wales and you rarely see the sun, you can just use normal 9 volts to power this. I posted about that on Instagram and I got quite a big response to it, so I thought I'd make a little DIY circuit that you can build at home. So I headed to the breadboard and uh, cooked something up for you guys, and I came up with this. So this is the Sun Swallower Mark II. So this revision uh, has three buttons along the bottom, two tune knobs, a big old power switch on the front there, a starve knob, a master knob, and two solar panels to bump it up to 10 volts. Again, you've got the DC jack as a fail safe for those cloudy days. I essentially took a circuit bending response to designing this and just tinkered until I got some interesting sounds. So we can flip over to that footage and you can see what I got up to. Here's what I came up with over an afternoon of tinkering. So this IC comes with six Schmidt trigger inverters on board. So I've set up two, you can see at the top of these columns, with a potentiometer to tune the oscillator. And then underneath those oscillator blocks, I've got two with a fixed resistor in that position. I found that adding these fixed resistor oscillators added to the tonality of the oscillator and gave it a bit of resonance and just a, there was just a bit more for your ear to latch onto. If you have a look in the top right corner, there's a bog standard sort of power supply uh, and then it's feeding the Starve potentiometer, which is a B50K, which is a pretty large value for a Starve pot, but uh, there was a lot of textures in there that you could get from it. So I thought I'd keep that large and keep those available and you can just compensate with the master knob to turn the volume up when you're losing the output from starving the circuit. The button at the top of the schematic is just connecting the middle lugs of both tune pots together. Again, this is just a circuit bender sort of thing. I poked them together, it sounded interesting, so I thought I'll pop that on a button. And then down at the bottom, you've got two more buttons that are just adding big old capacitors into the mix uh, to mess up the frequency range of the primary oscillator. The outputs of the primary oscillators at pin 2 and pin 12 are connected together by 200k resistors. They then run through a 1 microfarad capacitor to the volume pot and out. In the actual build, I left out the polarity protection diode and the power filtering. They're probably worth having in there, I just basically forgot to do it when I was building it up. I also added a toggle to make or break the power connection so you can shut the thing up, which isn't shown here. Okay, so let's get on to building. I built this on Vero board, I just sort of make it up as I go along so I don't have a layout to share and I'm not very good at designing those anyway so if someone is very good at those and fancies designing a layout from the schematic and uh, dropping it in the comments that would be awesome. Once I'd shoved everything on there and soldered them in place I just sort of drag a razor blade along the gaps in the Vero board just to make sure that there's no microscopic connections being made. I'd pre-stuffed the enclosure with the pots and the buttons and the power toggle uh, just because I find it easier really to get everything in there first and then I'll just wire everything to what's already in situ. 
I drilled out some holes in the enclosure big enough for the little power terminals uh, to be accessible on the back of the solar panels. I find I need to mark the back of the pots as well to make sure I remember what each one's supposed to be doing. To wire the solar panels in series, it's as easy as wiring the positive terminal of one of the panels to the negative terminal of the other panel, and then the remaining positive and negatives are just your plus and minus. So now I'm just proceeding to wire up as much of the circuit as I can without actually having the piece of Vero in the enclosure. I try and keep the majority of my ground wires one colour, uh, so here I've just gone for a pink just to make it a bit obvious what should be connected to ground when I'm checking it with a multimeter layer. So once I've got a good chunk of the offboard wiring sort of wired up, I start adding wires to the Vero board and making them sort of super long so I can make sure that they fit. I'll make a little bed with electrical tape for the Vero to sit on. It's probably better to use standoffs for this, but this is just what I had to hand, so that's what I used. So that's it done. It's a bit of a rat's nest, but who cares? It works and it sounds fun. Uh, I'll, maybe I'll make a DIY PCB if people want it. Drop a comment if you would and uh, yeah, I'll look into it. Okay, let's listen. 